The assumption from the general public appears to be that we here at Snowtrack simply ride snowmobiles all day long. And while that is partially true, being on a snowmobile for us is about way more than just riding. At this point, it's simply ingrained in our DNA to constantly be thinking and evaluating the sled, no matter what sled it is, whenever we ride. Our fleet of test sleds this season has a collective 18,000 plus miles, and every one of those miles was spent dissecting every aspect of whatever sled was being ridden. When we pick the Snowtrack's real world sled of the year, it's not just about what sled is the newest or flashiest or fastest. This season was, hands down, the most difficult to date because simply put, the fleet of sleds available from all four OEs this year was the best this industry has ever seen. I can honestly say I haven't ridden a bad sled this season. What I can say is that a few stood way out from the rest and they are Arctic Cat ZR 9000 RR, Polaris's Switchback Assault 800, Yamaha's Sidewinder RTX SE and Skidoo's MXZX 850. Each of these sleds offer a riding experience that is way above average. But as it goes, year after year, there can only be one winner. That's why it's called the real world sled of the year, not sleds. So the job for today is to whittle down each of these units to their very core to find out which one is the most deserving of the coveted title. It's time to get started. For 2017, Arctic Cat worked closely with Yamaha to come up with a new shared engine package. The 998cc three-cylinder engine with a liquid-cooled, intercooled turbocharger is the most powerful stock snowmobile engine in history. It's a bit of a strange sensation to be riding down a fast trail at about one-third throttle, only to find out you're doing 70 miles an hour. This engine package requires a complete thumb-to-brain recalibration. Does the 9000RR ride good? does it ever. That slide action rear end soaks up anything in its path from annoying stutters to deep moguls. On a rough day, this sled is a great choice. Likewise, that race front end when set up soft rides fantastic and furthermore, this ZR chassis handles really, really well. Ergonomically, the 9000RR is good, but not great. The issue we've run into is that if you'd like to ride up on the tank with your handlebars more forward, you're gonna be hitting your knees on the key panels. It's not a huge deal, but it's not perfect. Next on our list is Polaris's Switchback Assault 800. Here's a sled that pretty much came right at a left field and knocked us collectively on our butts. Any previous model of Switchback Assault was, to be perfectly blunt, a terrible riding snowmobile, and they didn't handle much better. The problem was that they were way too biased to off-trail riding, and it showed big time when you pulled in behind the groomer. For 2017, Polaris updated the front end of the Assault to be nearly identical to what's found on their trail sleds, and most importantly, they released an all-new skid frame called the IGX, which is a cross between a trail and mountain skid meant to provide the absolute best of both worlds. This 2017 Switchback Assault rides and handles every bit as good as any other trail sled on the market, in some cases even better. But it's not just a trail sled. The Assault's IGX rear skid has 144 inch tipped rails and is wrapped in a track with two inch paddles. This is a sled that can be taken off the trail and ridden pretty darn close to the same way you'd ride an RMK and it does it well. Off trail it handles great, it's ergonomically excellent and it can go places few other crossovers can go. The 800 Clean Fire is a stout performer, and we've come to really appreciate its fast revving character and big bottom end pull. If you're thinking to yourself, what don't we like about the Assault 800? The answer is not much. It's no secret that Yamaha's Sidewinder is the same basic sled as Arctic Cat's 9000 series. A few subtle visual differences, different clutches, and a different ski are all that really set them apart from a technical standpoint. What's interesting though is that when we're asked about this new turbocharged power plant, almost every question is directed at the Sidewinder. Few people ask about Arctic Cat's 9000. It would seem the Sidewinder has really caught people's attention. And it should. It's a beast of a sled, just like the 9000. The power package is like a mix between a Dodge Cummins and a Lamborghini V12. It's interesting that the industry's most powerful stock four-stroke engine is also one of the most pleasant four-stroke engines ever to ride on the trail. I think this RTX SE is one sexy looking unit, but it does lack in the suspension adjustability department. 
Both front and rear suspension setups on this sled are capable of providing an excellent ride, but the way they're set up here leaves something to be desired. Likewise, this chassis is capable of being an excellent handler, but Yamaha's tuner ski is simply not a good fit here and causes some not so desirable handling traits we don't see when a different ski is used. Skidoo's MXZX 850 is an all new sled this season, and it brings with it a long list of new and innovative features to go along with its all new engine and chassis package. The 850 E-Tech 2 power package is a stump puller, there's no question, but probably the most endearing quality of this motor is how smooth and well controlled it is. Simply put, it's an effortless engine to drive. It's also insanely efficient, getting better gas and oil mileage than any other 800 class sled in history. Suspension wise, more praise is deserved because our motion is, to be blunt, the best rear suspension system ever. Its ability to erase anything that's littering the trails is almost unbelievable. On the other hand, the front end of the MXZX leaves a little bit to be desired. It's got lots of travel and it's set up plush enough, but it just seems to get overworked on the big bumps at higher rates of speed. It doesn't help that the front shocks aren't adjustable at all either. The 850's chassis is a really nice departure from the old Rev XS setup. It's tough as nails, it's innovative with an integrated tunnel cooling system, and it's comfortable both in ride and ergonomics. Now comes the fun part. We've done an overview of each of these sleds so you know what they're made of. Now it's time to find out how they stack up against each other because that's what's really important. To determine a winner, we put together a categorized evaluation sheet for each of the four sleds. Individually, each sled was given a rating out of 10 in 18 different categories. The sled with the highest number of points at the end is the winner. Landing in fourth place is Yamaha's Sidewinder RTX SE. But this finishing position comes with a bit of an explanation. The RTX SE is by no means a bad sled. In fact, quite the opposite. It's a great sled. We've logged thousands of miles on ours and found only a couple things we don't like about it. First and foremost, the skis. These tuner skis are ruining the handling of this sled. If Yamaha would include a set of single keel skis, this sled would handle just as well as the 9000 RR, which is to say, really well. As it is, it's just not as good. Second, the ride. While not a bad riding sled, it's just not as good as we know it can be. If this were a base model, the shock package would make more sense, but this is a $15,000 snowmobile. It should include more adjustable shocks. In third place comes Articat ZR9000RR. It scored big marks in engine performance, suspension adjustability, and all season durability, but it only finished five points ahead of the Yamaha. All of these five points were gained in categories relating to handling and ride quality. Things the 9000RR skis and high-end shock package do right. The 9000RR is a great sled. In fact, it's our favorite four-stroke snowmobile ever. But the simple fact is that you can feel the extra weight of that four-stroke motor up front when things get tighter, which hurt its scores in the overall rider experience and on-trail handling categories. This leaves us with the Polaris Switchback Assault 800 and Skidoo's MXZX 850. And before I go any further, I need to say, the results of our evaluation of these two sleds is unprecedented in real world sled of the year history. When all of the category scores were tallied, both of these sleds came away with the same number of points. It was an even tie. That's never happened before. It's been close in the past, but never a tie. We had promised ourselves many years ago that we wouldn't allow for a tie in this competition. The sled that wins the most individual categories of evaluation will break the tie and come out on top. But before we reveal which one that actually is, let's go over a few of the things that make these two sleds stand out among all the rest. Starting with the Switchback Assault and its unheard of combination of on and off trail prowess. We've tested a lot of crossovers before, but we've never ridden a sled that does both halves of the equation as well as this one does. If you were to only ride the Switchback Assault on the trail, it would still be among the very best trail sleds on the market. But put it up against any off-trail biased crossover sled and it actually does better in the deep snow. Simply put, this is a do anything, go anywhere, no compromise sled that finally sets in stone the definition of what a real crossover should be. 
It won categories relating to on-trail handling, front-end ride quality, suspension adjustability, overall rider comfort, and of course, on-off trail versatility, among other things. Skidoo's MXZX 850, while well, all new this year, has not suffered from first-year teething problems as is so often the case with a new sled. Ours has been bulletproof all season and has more miles than most of the other sleds in our fleet. This G4 chassis 850 combo have achieved one very important task. They improve on all of the things we didn't like about the older 800XS, but have maintained all the things we did like about that older model. This sled has also showcased some very new and important technology. Things like the narrow stator that allows for more centralized engine placement in the chassis, the one-piece tunnel with integrated cooling channels that saves weight and complexity while increasing efficiency, and last but not least, the P-Drive clutch, which allows for lightning-fast back shifts and sees a 40% increase in the engine's ability to reach shift RPM. The MXZX scored well in categories relating to rear-end ride quality, engine performance and economy, overall ease of use, and build quality, but it didn't score so well in areas that are relating to suspension adjustability and on-off trail versatility. Because these sleds are so different, there is one last point that needs to be made regardless of which one wins. The MXZX is not an off-trail sled in any way. It is a dedicated on-trail sled that is absolutely the best on-trail sled you can buy. The Assault is a crossover sled that's every bit as comfortable on the trail as it is off. It's not quite as good a trail sled as the MXZX, but it's not that far behind. On-off trail versatility is not the be-all and end-all of what makes a real-world sled of the year, though. With that info out of the way, the time has come to answer the most important question of all. Which of these two sleds won the most categories? Polaris's Switchback Assault 800 won a total of 8 of 18 categories. One category was a tie, and Skidoo's MXZX 850 won a total of 9 categories, in the end, making it the very deserving winner and our unanimous pick for the much-coveted title of Snowtracks TV's 2017 Real World Sled of the Year. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content from Snowtracks TV, Click the like button and subscribe to the Snowtracks TV YouTube channel.